Well, hi, everyone. Hi, hi, and happy Sunday to all of you. Beautiful, wonderful people. Uh, we are here together. It is I, the Oracle of Whimsy. I hope the lighting is okay. It looks like I've got maybe a little bit too much sun on the right, so I think I'll go ahead and take care of that. Uh, my sidekick, uh, Senorita Mila, as the children in East LA like to call her, East Hollywood. I don't know what you call that area I used to live in, but uh, she was known. I found her in an alley. She was not eating the best uh, food in the world, and then she discovered me, and the rest is history. Now she will only eat, the, you know, $25 for a bag or whatever it is. She's so spoiled, this cat. Let me change the lighting here. So it looks like Mila is off looking for her favorite treat. Uh, now she's going over to have a nap. Hmm. Anyway, uh, I think I'm going to put another divider up. I think this is a little bit too much sun. Okay, that's better. I apologize to everybody uh, for that little interruption. How's everybody doing? Happy July 4th. Happy, happy, happy July 4th to everybody. Um, I, this is Sundays with my alter ego, the Oracle of Whimsy. For those people who don't know the, or the legend of the Oracle of Whimsy, uh, let's talk about it. It's time to talk about the Oracle of Whimsy. But before I do that, I want to give gratitude to everyone who decided to spend July 4th with me uh, this beautiful brunch. It's 11 a.m. in beautiful downtown Portland, Oregon. The weather's been fantastic after the heat wave. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about a lot of stuff. Okay, but first, hello, Douglas. Good to see you here, and thank you for moderating. Hi, Harmony. Happy 4th to you as well. Cardo Mansi Mesquite, hello, hello, and thank you for being a member. B. Gray, happy 4th to you. Miami Rose, happy 4th. Tara Rayner, uh, helper extraordinaire, and also a great TA. Welcome. Ronnie, we Ronnie Weiss is here. Shalom, shalom. Aries girl with a Virgo moon. I'm an Aries girl with an Aquarius moon. Welcome. Ore Snow, a member, welcome. Hello. Uh, uh, Greeter TK is here. Thank you so much for your help. I am going to continue to say hi to everybody as we go along. We have a lot of blitzes to get through. We have a lot of questions from all of you. The first thing I want to talk about is sound effects. Now, the last time I did the sound effects, they were too loud because I was exper too many and too loud. So I apologize to anybody if it hurt their ears. Uh, I get it. Uh, it's disturbing to the chakras if, if the volume changes. So the good news is, is that when I use sound effects now, they will be coming from the computer to my left, uh, and uh, hopefully we'll give everyone a good laugh. So when you want to hear the sound effects, they're here. 
So yeah, um, I, I want to talk a little bit about the Oracle of Whimsy. As you can see, I've got my programming notes and only I can read my own handwriting, but um, salutations to everybody. I joke that my alter ego does the Sunday show. It's based on an oracle in the Bond tradition, which we like to call the Oracle of Whimsy or Mischief or um, Enchantment. First conceived in an ancient riverbed in a land far away from here. Now, for those of you who are not up to snuff, the Oracle of Whimsy is not a saint. So if you're looking for sainthood, you won't find it on, on this channel because the Oracle of Whimsy does not follow the rules, uh, is known to be mischievous, uh, fights the good fight, but doesn't always follow the rules. So I apologize to everyone who was hoping that I would be saintly and would not make fun of people getting caught for tax evasion. But alas, the Oracle of Whimsy is a, a fighter of justice and I care more about the rights of our homeless, many of whom served uh, valiantly as soldiers in this country, but can't even get basic uh, medical health care because the wealthy are not paying their taxes. So, there, so we had how many homeless people die in Portland during the heat wave? We know that hundreds and hundreds were hospitalized, some of whom are still hospitalized, heat stroke, et cetera. I think it was something like 13 people died just in downtown Portland, a couple of people died in Bend. Homeless uh, areas frequented by people who suffer from complex post-traumatic stress disorder and are treated like uh, criminals simply because they survived by the very people who really need to be in jail. So we live in a world where everything is upside down. The criminals are telling us that they're the good people and the good people who are simply trying to survive with mental health challenges, head injuries, people who in many cases are suffering from those problems because they served in the military, et cetera. That's where I think we should be focusing our compassion, our financial resources, et cetera. I can't justify and be compassionate. I can't, be just, I can't justify somebody spending $200,000 on their hair. And so on that note, I will, I will be doing it. I, I know. See, I'm the Oracle of Whimsy. So that's, you got to pay your taxes, honey. So I'm sorry that the, you know, I just was watching the news. You know, I like to prep before the show. I do my notes, etc. And both Don Jr. and Eric Trump have been on the airwaves whining about how upset they are that they're the victims because according to, uh, let's take a look at what has come out so far. Okay, according to the Washington Post, here's what's going on on the Trump investigation. Prosecutors say that they have a spreadsheet they're looking at the spreadsheet from the Trump organization, and they're saying that it offers a roadmap for indictments. 15 years of paying chief financial officers off the books. So uh, this was cars, apartments, tuition for their ki uh, children, hard cash. Uh, all of that was hidden from the tax authority. So just in terms of gifts, 900000 Now they're talking total mo money he didn't pay taxes on, $1.7 million over a 15-year period. But obviously, this is just one tax fraud scheme that the Trump organization is being accused of. There are multiple tax, uh, tax uh, uh, evasion schemes and tax fraud schemes that they were involved in. This is just one. Um, so... Based on the fact that they've got solid evidence on that, they're trying to get Weisselberg to flip because they've got all these other things that they're looking into. So they found that there were both public uh, uh, spreadsheets, but there were also private or internal spreadsheets. And the internal spreadsheets tallied what the hidden payments were. So basically the Manhattan grand jury is viewing that as basically a confession. In plainer words, what the Manhattan district attorney is saying is the fact that you had a hidden spreadsheet showing the fact that, the fact that you were sending this money through this area and then hiding it 
is a confession of guilt. You knew it was wrong, and that's why you had two separate spreadsheets. So that was kind of interesting that that came up. And then we had Eric Trump. Uh, he was, I don't know, they've got one person. He went to Newsmax. Eric Trump might have been on Fox News, I don't know, or, or Newsmax. And then Don Jr., also uh, Fox News, Newsmax, et cetera. I think they're leaning more towards Newsmax because Newsmax seems to be uh, sympathetic to the cause. I don't know. What do you all think? Should, should, should Ivanka Trump have to pay uh, taxes on the $200,000 that she used to have perfectly straight blonde hair? Is that really, or should we let our servicemen and women who have protected this country with honor, who are uh, dying in heat waves because they don't have the mental wherewithal to function due to complex PTSD, let alone be able to hold down a job. So I say, and I'm going to give you another sound. Uh, I'm going to give you another clip. I say, let her eat cake, tax her. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> we're going to take away, we're going to take away those, those haircuts and you're going to have to pay. T I know I'll stop. I'll stop. But I find it hysterically funny. I hope everyone's having a good laugh about it because my compassion and my empathy is for the vets uh, that I see every day, they can't even get a service dog. You know, they can't even get a service dog. I've met, I've met so many vets with head injuries. You want them to go and get a full-time job when you're the one that gave them the head injuries and you're telling them to take an Advil. Uh, you're, you're telling them to take an Advil because uh, it's no big deal. Here's my Trump cry. They're taking Durango. They're taking Mar-a-Lago. They're taking New Jersey. They're taking it all, and they're taking it all, and we're going to give it back to the people. It belongs to them, the people that fought and died for this country, and you're not one of them. I know. Sucks, doesn't it? Hey, like I said, this is the Oracle of Whimsy. Uh, I have no control over what the Oracle of Whimsy chooses to do on the Sunday show. So what do y'all think? Have we made fun of the abusers enough? Because that's, uh, it's okay with me if we keep going. Uh, but I, I, out of compassion for you, I will stop. Okay. Now we've had enough fun with that and we're going to move towards the spiritual. I got it out of my system, but uh, we'll go ahead and move on. So I think that a lot of the questions right now, and rightly so, have to do with the fact that people want to know about the future of the Trump organization and what happened with the Trump organization. And if you're looking at the remotes, and if you look at some of the stuff that I've put in the comments section, I would encourage people to, to take a look in the community section, uh, some of the previous posts that came up. It's interesting for me in the sense that it looks like we got the hit right around the time that the deal was made. And it appears that it was around 2018 that Kushner and Ivanka seem to have been encouraged to cooperate with a federal investigation, which leads me to suspect that uh, Kushner has been cooperating for a long time. Did everybody get a chance to see that post? Um, I think I dated it. Let's take a look here. Where is it? Uh, did I not publish it? Um, maybe I didn't publish it. I thought I put it up. Did I publish it? I don't see it here. Basically 2018. Uh, was when we got that hit. Ah, here it is. It was time stamped that Jared flipped. Let's go ahead and see if we can get close to the date. Uh, sometime around September 2018, he was appears to have been openly cooperating. Here's what the remote said from uh, September 2018 based on 
the vision I had of Kushner fighting with Ivanka because she had lied about her signature. So here's how it looked at the time I did the remote, September 4th, 2018. I would not be surprised to see a plea deal from Kushner. As of late, I have had the feeling that we may be seeing a plea from Kushner in exchange for a lesser sentence in cooperation with the Mueller investigation. The feeling is that this deal has been going on for a while and is being negotiated by his attorney, Abby Lowe. Kushner feels his number one priority is to his family, not to Donald Trump. Not sure if Ivanka will be indicted, but expect a plea deal from Kushner. All right. So that is how it looked. So that's why I'm feeling like Ivanka probably... Uh, probably joined the uh, other side. Oh, thank you, Marie Hansen. It's awfully kind of you. Yeah, and I think, a uh, good point uh, uh, from Roni, uh, you know, that it does appear like a, a crime family. And I think people have to understand that they're only talking about one thing they found, which is the fact that people were being paid under the books, but by no means is this the only investigation that we're seeing with the Trump organization. All right, the other thing in the news today is the January 6th commission. Uh, we can definitely throw on it if people like. Of course, everyone's surprised uh, that uh, Liz Cheney is on the list. It's Liz Cheney and seven Democrats, uh, including Adam Schiff, a Democrat out of Tennessee. Uh, it, it's a good group of people. And I think that, I think it's a good thing. If nothing else, then it publicly is going to draw attention to the issue. So, oh, thank you, Edie. It's awfully kind of you. I do appreciate that. You know, it's a good question, Connie. Will they subpoena Trump? Probably not. I don't think they need to do that in order to get information. So uh, we can definitely look at January 6th as well today. Another interesting thing I saw in the news and I thought people would like to talk about, it has to do with a police chief out of Ohio, Anthony Campo. I don't know if other people have seen this information about Anthony Campo. He appears to have been filmed leaving a note that says Ku Klux Klan on a black officer's raincoat. Uh, he's been placed on administrative leave, but I think it again opens up the way to a conversation about just how far this type of racism goes and this idea of a brotherhood of sorts uh, in uh, some police departments that seem to be advocating for white supremacy, uh, et cetera. It's very uh, disheartening when you see it coming out of a state like Ohio, which is smack dab, you know, in the center of the country. And, uh, you know, it's disheartening, but it'll be interesting to see how that goes and if people want to uh, throw on it later. Hi, Christopher. Thank you so much for that donation. All right, and the next thing on the list uh, that's coming up as a discussion, and we can certainly throw on it as well, has to do with Joe Biden's infrastructure package. So um, here's the thing. It looks like, let's first off, I'm going to give Joe Biden an applause. Yeah, because I believe in his infrastructure package. But what was interesting is that I was reading, I was reading a couple different things, U.S. Uh, U.S. News. Uh, I was looking at the New York Times, Washington Post, etc. I also looked at uh, a little bit of CNN today. I don't, I don't spend as much time on CNN as people think. <laughs> um, but it looks like the GOP is threatened by the infrastructure package because it will help strengthen uh, democratic support in the upcoming uh, mid-election, uh, the uh, midterms. So that seems to be the main motivation. We have to sabotage this because it's such a popular bill with the people. And if it's, pa if it's passed by a democratic president, we're not going to be able to win in districts where we're on thin ice. So 
it's kind of interesting that, that the Republicans, rather than thinking about saving the planet with new green infrastructure, which is the only economy that's left, or worrying about whether or not they'll be reelected, they, they'd rather destroy the country, uh, put everybody's lives at risk, leave their constituents impoverished, then do the right thing because they're worried about votes. And I think that that speaks volume. So uh, we can definitely throw on that. Uh, last thing uh, uh, is the tropical storm Elsa scheduled to hit Florida and Georgia Wednesday and Thursday night. Uh, if you're in those areas, make sure to take care. If you have to leave, leave. Uh, take care of yourselves, but we can also throw on Tropical Storm Elsa, which is hitting Florida, and uh, definitely we'll want to make sure everybody's uh, good to go with that. So we can throw on that. Last, I want to make an announcement again for people that don't know. I will be at the Feel Good Festival in Atlanta, Georgia on July 17th and 18th. I'll be speaking on human evolution and how we are evolving towards creating a beautiful world, a beautiful universe. Uh, for those people who don't know, I'm an anthropologist and a naturopathic doctor. So it's gonna be a fun, fun, fun time. The Feel Good Festival, uh, which is being hosted by my friend Adele, uh, will bring people from all over the world, futurist, healers, musicians, etc., from all over the world coming together to help sharing their knowledge of how to help one another feel better, save the planet, and make the earth the Garden of Eden, which is ultimately what our real function in the world is. we got to create heaven on earth. And so we do that within our own homes. So I have 20 tickets to get in for volunteers and Anybody who's a tarot reader, who's a good reader, uh, et cetera, we do have a table. Uh, I'd like to meet with everybody. I'm going to be at the Emerald, what is it I'm at? The Embassy Suites in Midtown. I'll be at the Embassy Suites. So July 16th, the night of the 16th, I can get your tickets to, with, to you if you'd like to have drinks and hang out or uh, meet beforehand before the uh, festival. I've got your tickets if you are a volunteer. All right, that's all the announcements. Woohoo! Yeah, there's a couple different forks uh, Marie Hansen is talking about. We, you know, when you look at scientists that project, they'll look at the various different possibilities for how it'll hit. And uh, yeah, you don't wanna play with it. You wanna take care of yourself. Anti-Semitism is definitely something that I want to talk about, Danielle. I mean, um, and anti-Semitism on both sides, on the left and on the right. This is one of the few times when I agreed with Meghan McCain when she confronted anti-Semitism in the liberal and the left community, which is becoming just as virulent as the anti-Semitism on the right. So we just have to call it out. A lot of the time it's dressed as misinformation right? Propaganda, Nazi propaganda in the left, Nazi propaganda in the right. It's always good to do a fact check because when you look at a lot of those articles that are showing up both in the left and in the right, they're just uh, two coins of the, they're, they're two sides of the same coin. For example, there was a fake story that was going on a, a couple of years ago and some people in the left uh, picked it up. Jews were poisoning the wells of Palestinians. Well, everything is the fault of the Jews. The Jews are evil. Uh, you know, so it's easy to believe that the Jews are uh, running around poisoning wells. Those are old anti-Semitic tropes that have been around from Eastern Europe for a long time, and they exist in order to create dissension and to get people to hate Jewish people. So I would just caution people on the left and on the right. Both of us are being targeted, the left and the right and to get our facts straight about things before we just gobble it up and assume it's a fact. So that is definitely a problem with anti-Semitism on both sides, but it doesn't surprise me that the right, which is heavily influenced by Ukrainian propaganda, which it has unfortunately a long history of anti-Semitism. In fact, I would say 
of everywhere in Eastern Europe, probably the Ukraine has some of the bloodiest, most horrific anti-Semitism of any place in Eastern Europe, possibly in all of Europe that I can think of. And people in the Ukraine get mad at me. No, be nice. I'm a very nice person, but we all have to own our past. We all have to own our history. And so, again, it doesn't surprise me that this anti-Semitic uh, fake news is coming out of the Ukraine because the Ukraine has a long history of producing this type of trash. So that's what I would say about anti-Semitism today. All right. So it, it, we are 25 uh, minutes in. Is, are people ready to get a collective reading? Yeah? Would everybody like to get a cheer? Uh, how about a cheer? Would you all like to have a cheer before we start the reading? Yeah, a little bit of a cheer. Yeah, a little bit. There's a little bit of, it's Sunday. You know, I got a wrestling crowd cheer too, which I thought was fun because it's July 4th. It goes like this. Like a wrestling match between good and evil. Right? I love it. <laughs> All right, let's do the empath's prayer. I will not do any special effects now because we're going into spirit mode, but... Uh, beforehand, it's fun. All right. So now we got to get serious. Thank you, Danielle. You're so sweet. I'm trying to get people to laugh. And the sound effects are much lower because I've got it on, the, on a separate computer. So it's not blaring. It's just to get people to laugh. I've also got bad people burning in hell forever, like the people that have stolen from the good people, the people who are taking advantage of all those innocent people who, you know, $200,000 goes a long way when you're starving in the streets of Portland and you're happy to get a peanut butter sandwich and a bowl of soup. So uh, here is Hades, people burning in hell in Hades. <laughs> Mike Pompeo, you know, the disastrous foreign policies that have led to people being murdered in Yemen, children being murdered in Afghanistan. Get it out of your system. The fires of Hades, yes. So if you do have complex post-traumatic stress disorder and you feel like you have no power to fight back, I hope that gives you some comfort. Certainly has made me laugh. All right, let's do the impasse prayer. Okay, spirit, we're gonna do a collective. Let's do it. All right, I wanna call on white light protection for myself and this community as we ask permission from spirit to access the Akashic records. We call on our spirit guides and good angels to be with us. Please give us the clarity and the wisdom that is needed to empower all of us on our journeys, to make the best decisions for ourselves, our families, the planet, the people we love, but also to help those we may have strife with. And together collectively as a community, we say, amen. Let's go in. What do we need to know now, spirit? It's going to help us all be on the good road. Oh, Linda G's here. Hi, Linda. I love Linda. She's a good person. Oh, is Bugs Bunny laughing? <laughs> Let's see. Where we are at right now, the base of the matter for this community, our reading is... 
you know, I like this energy. Things are starting to switch for us. I think we all went through a period where it was kind of like we were feeling a bit like victims, weren't we? We were feeling a little down. Somebody had said a couple days ago, I got a message, I am not a victim. I am not a victim. Yeah, they're stealing the taxes. Yeah, they're doing this, but I am not a victim. And as I meditated on that, I was thinking of Dave Ramsey. He always says that, you are not a victim. You are not a victim. Take some responsibility for your situation. You are not a victim. Well, I've got some bad news for you. You're a victim. Just because we want to brush it under the rug and say, oh, no, I'm not a victim. Just because the sociopaths and the malignant narcissists who are stealing your money, your taxes, using you like a rag and throwing you in the trash, just because you want to believe that you are not a victim because you're being pressured by the people victimizing you who don't want to pay their taxes, they're, they're victimizing you, and then they're telling you, this is not happening. This is not happening. You are not a victim because you don't want to feel like a victim. I get it. But the federal government disagrees with you. You're a victim. You're a victim, I'm a victim, our children are victims, our grandkids are, everybody in this country is a victim when somebody steals our money because they don't want to pay their taxes. We may not want to acknowledge it. We may want to put our head in the sand. We may want to listen to the perpetrators. Okay, I'm not a victim, even though you're taking on my money, even though I can't pay for a community college, even though I'm working 50 hours a week and you don't want to raise minimum wage, I'm not a victim, you're a victim. And being in denial that we are being victims of this is not going to help us. What's going to help us is acknowledging, yeah, this is abuse. We're being victimized. But once you know that, and once you get informed and accept reality, that's actually empowering. That's when you can begin to fight the good fight and refuse to be a victim. It's not putting your head in the sand and saying, no, 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 I'm not a victim. While your bank account gets drained, while people walk all over you and turn you into a doormat. We stop being victims by accepting reality and seeing when corruption is happening and dealing with it. Not by acquiescing more territory to the perpetrators, not by giving the monsters more power, not by letting them tell us that, oh, no, I'm not a victim. Well, oh, come on, get over it. You're making such a big deal about the fact that Joe grabbed your breast in the bar. I mean, it's just a breast. The way that perpetrators will trivialize and minimize the crimes that are being perpetrated against you and me and everybody else. Be aware that that is a mind game in order to make you feel ashamed about the righteous anger that you may be feeling about the fact that somebody's trying to victimize you. But the only way you're going to fix it is by acknowledging that it's not okay for Joe to grab your breast. We must learn to fight for our own rights so that we have the skill to do it for others. But it doesn't happen by sticking our head in the sand and pretending it isn't real if the feds are charging the Trump organization with tax evasion. They didn't pay their federal taxes. Then guess what they're saying? They're saying that the American people have been defrauded, which means you're a victim, whether you want to accept it or not. What has changed for us energetically from last week is that now I feel a different vibration from this community in the sense of what can I do to make the world a better place? What can I do to contribute to the good? How am I connecting to the greater community? I can sit and hide in my closet, which is what I did for a year and a half during COVID, or I can be part of the change I wanna see in the world by volunteering and by being actively involved in the change. You can see here, the karma card is the three of wands. It's a good luck card, but it's also a card that denotes our relationship with the other over the water, over the sea, how we connect to those around us. I love the king of cups. It's the peacemaker, it's the bridge. I love the, every time I see this card, I think about the song Bridge Over Troubled Water because that is precisely who the King of Cups is. He is 
strong and solid and nothing's going to knock him down, even though the waters are rocky. This is someone who will often advocate or help smooth the waters for others. And I love the fact that it's included in this idea of looking beyond ourselves, looking beyond our own little pool to the greater uh, to the greater world and how we can contribute to the greater world, that we are not just beholden to ourselves, but we are beholden to others as well. The fool takes a leap of faith would denote that we're at a point in our lives where we're about to begin the journey again. You have grieved long enough. This reminds me of that really cool movie, uh, Dances with Wolves. Does everybody remember the movie Dances with Wolves where da uh, Dances with Wolves, the, char the character falls in love with the woman, stands with fist, and she goes through a period of grieving the death of her husband. She goes through this long, extensive grieving period. And then there comes a time when the medicine man says your grieving is over. It's time to get up off the ground and get on with your life and be part of the world again, because there's work to do in the world. There's righteous work to do in the world. It's time now for you to get back out there. The fool takes the leap of faith and he begins tentatively to walk out into the world and okay, it's time for me to reconnect with my fellow human being. There is this feeling of the Eight of Swords crossing us as if we've kind of put ourselves in a situation where we've become too restricted. It's something we have to be very careful about. Working on ourselves, going deep within, the work, the spiritual work that we did during COVID, the self-examination, the grieving, the last couple of years, so many of us have looked at our shadow. It's been painful, but now it's time to get up and go and what can we do to make the world a better place? I got a remote last night for this group and it had to do with royalty and what is royalty, what it is to be an aristocrat and how we are all being called to be aristocrats. It seems like a strange remote, and when I meditated on it, I found myself in the energy of that force they, that the Yoruba people of Nigeria call Oshun. Oshun is the mother of, the, of humanity. She's the, she's the mother of the land animals. She governs the blood. She governs the blood. She's seen in a yellow or an orange dress as the queen of wands. She typifies self-respect and self-esteem. She is the queen. And she comes to us both in the dream state and, uh, and in the cards to talk to us about what it truly means to be a royal. She had a list for us. You know, when we think about that vibration that is Oshun, the energy or the goddess Oshun in the Aruba tradition, she's, she, she has self-respect and she, she's extremely respectful to others. She demands that you respect her and she demands respect from herself. The energy of Oshun would never speak ill of a man. She would never insult men. She would never degrade men. And she wouldn't do that to women. Because the essence of Oshun is respecting women. <clears throat> oh, thank you, Linda G. That's so kind of you. Good to see you here. You're so, you're so gracious. Hope you can stay. Um, so the more that I've been meditating on Gaia and the forces that allow life to exist in this world, the more I find myself seized by this energy of Oshun. She is the sweet waters. She asks us to clean the waters, to remove trash. If you're walking by a stream and you see any garbage obstructing the water, understand that that is her circulatory system and that is how she feeds nutrition to her babies. Help her take the trash out of the stream so that her blood can flow. This is why Oshun is associated with the circulatory system, right? For those of you who have studied Yoruba culture, the blood 
And the sweet water, for her, the sweet water is her blood. And this is how she feeds her babies. She comes to us in the fourth house and she teaches us how to be regal. She teaches us how to be a king. She teaches us how to be a queen. She says, carry yourself with self-respect, know your worth, but also see it in the other. Give respect to others because you see their value, you know their worth, that they too are a child of Gaia. See it in yourself and then give it to another. So this is the first gift she gave me in the reading, that I must respect myself, not through arrogance or ego, but because I recognize my true nature and I recognize it in you. And from a place of mutual respect, knowing our value and knowing who we are, that we are, the, we are from the source of all life and we are here to do good work in the world. That isn't ego, that is simply knowing your place in the world. And so she talked to me a lot in the meditation about self-respect, respect for myself. A queen, a king carries themselves with respect and dignity and always gives respect and never loses the common touch. It's not that I am better. No, I'll roll up my sleeves and I'll pick up trash if we're going to have a party. That's royalty. I'll pick up the dog doo-doo in the, in the backyard. Work is work because I'm here to serve and I'm here to respect you and let's all have a good party. So it was one of the first things that I received. The second thing that I received uh, from her in the message, message was this importance of duty that true aristocracy is dutiful and that this duty is beyond one's personal needs. I may personally want to go and have an affair with a rock musician. Wouldn't that be fun? But duty requires me. People expect more from me. I can't just go off and do whatever I want. If I want to carry myself as an aristocrat, I have to understand that I have a duty to myself, to others. My kingdom is my studio apartment in Portland, Oregon, so treat it like a kingdom. If that's all you have is a studio apartment and you're the queen of your castle or the king of your castle, you need to start coming up with some rules about how you carry yourself, how you treat yourself, how you treat others, and about what your duty is to the world. Your duty is to yourself and your duties to the greater purpose in this world. That three of wands energy is starting to move in. How can I be of service? I am required as a, spirit, as a, a spiritual person that's connected to this deity of saving the planet to be dutiful. There are things in this world that are more important than my personal needs. And sometimes I have to put my personal needs aside because I'm called to something uh, do my duties. It's very powerful. And it's something that we see a lot in the aristocracy. We see it, for example, in Queen Elizabeth and in, in her children and grandchildren, duty, the, the greater good, putting your own personal needs aside. There's a time and a place for that. There's a time and a place for self-sacrifice, but it has to be because of a genuine sense of duty that there are things and people and circumstances in this world that are far greater than just me, taking everyone and the greater good into consideration before we make certain decisions. You can see the third house here. It's again coming in, this archetype of Oshun. Oshun, who is the African goddess. You know, there's some interesting stories about her as an archetype. In the Jewish tradition, this is... Uh, Judge Judy, basically, uh, of the tribe of Judea. You can see the lion of Judah in the back. You can see the little kitty cat, which is the lioness. I love that. Reminds me of Mila. It can be a fire sign female. She's very temperamental because she's part of the blood, right? The, the sweet water, the circulatory system, the passion, the blood, the fiery uh, yellow dress. She's easily offended. You don't treat me right, I'm out the door. It's the energy that keeps that gives us sweet water, honey, romance. She's associated with Venus, the goddess of love in the Greek Roman tradition, right? Aphrodite, that beautiful energy. 
But you can see here what we're sitting in is the Two of Cups, which is a sacred contract. So there's this idea of us dutifully going into the world, connecting to the world to help others, the bridge over troubled water. But there's also this awareness that this is a sacred contract as we step into our power and begin to develop a relationship with Gaia based on this strong energy uh, that we call Oshun. She seeks justice absolute. She seeks justice absolute. Both Judah, the tribe of Judah that carried the staff of authority, uh, as well as uh, a Judy. Oh, I got my bedroom, got my unmade bed there. Let me, can I'll see my bed unmade? Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> Um, so what we're seeing with these types of cards is that it again goes back to this idea of self-respect, self-reliance, sacred contracts, serving the greater world, attempting to be the bridge over troubled water, getting beyond the situation we've placed ourselves in, former contracts, entering into the time of scholarship. It's also a time when a lot of people are going to be studying, getting a lot of information. This is a time where people just want to learn, 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 uh, read, 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 study, study, study. Where we are at right now, we are grieving what we lost. Make sure we don't, don't grieve to the point where we cannot see what we have because what we have is quite powerful, particularly if we are aligning ourselves with the greater purpose of life. Five of Cups can be very powerful in the sense that we, we don't focus on what we have, we focus on what we've lost, but it also gives us an opportunity to turn around and use the resources we have. It reminds me of the Leonard Cohen uh, song, uh, ring the bells that can be rung, do not, what is it? Something about... Do not worry about your perfect offering. There is a crack in everything. That is how the light gets in, something like that. Uh, but the point being that if we spend too much time, oh, I could have been a contender. Oh, you can still be a contender. Turn around and start planting seeds. Those two, for all you know, those two of cups have seeds in them and you could plant, you could have a hundred cups, but you're so busy focusing on what you've lost. You're wasting your life, life that could be spent enjoying what you already have or what you could have. Uh, what is around you? People are walking away that no longer serve you. The problem when we become enlightened and we learn self-respect and we learn self-reliance and we learn to carry ourselves with respect and have appropriate boundaries that is definitely something Oshun teaches is, I love you, but the answer is no, I'm not going to do that. It's not good for my mental and physical health, and it's not good for your mental and physical health. I'll give you my honest opinion, but I'm not going to do your work for you. That kind of an attitude is definitely an attitude of Oshun. Five of swords in the opposition or in relationship to you would be suggesting that people or relationships have changed or walked away, possibly because they no longer work with this new person that you've become, the hope and the fear going into smoother waters, that the bad times are behind you. The final outcome is you look towards the higher purpose, the higher calling, the higher offense. The clarification for you today, you must develop boundaries, but don't be stubborn. Don't be trapped in the past so much that you refuse to change. The other in relationship to you, some serious changes are going to have to be made with the people that didn't treat you right. They can either get with the program and use you as a mentor to do the same thing in their own lives. We all are called to find the light within ourselves, that part of ourselves that wants to serve, that part of ourselves that can experience self-respect and then give it to another. I can't give you self-respect if I have no respect of my own. I must find it in myself and then I can give it to somebody else. But you can see a judgment coming for the people who have walked away from you or couldn't handle this shift that you made in the last year and a half, couple years. It means people will have to leave or they will have to adjust their vision and see you 
for the person that you are, a person whose life that has value and self-respect because you carry yourself as such and you have the boundaries there to tell people, this is who I am, these are my values, I'm sorry our relationship didn't work out. The hope and the fear for you, your business, your uh, kingdom, your finances, the things you can control, the hidden queen, everybody doesn't have to know your business. You don't have to be, everything doesn't have to be out on the page, you know, crying your eyes out. Uh, be about your business as the queen of pentacles. Uh, get organized. Do an accountant or ram ram a reckoning. Look at your budget. Look at your debts. Live frugally. Live simply. Don't spend things you don't need. Recycle. A queen of pentacles is about her business. She's the business queen. The final outcome for us is avoid uh, too much alcohol, too much recreational drug use, uh, blood sugar dysregulation, spacey energy, stay hydrated, get out of the sun if it's starting to affect your mental uh, faculties. There's a warning here about lunatic energy. Very important for everybody to stay grounded. Make sure you're spending time on the earth. Get your, uh, maybe take your shoes off and walk on the earth to ground yourself. Meditate while sitting on the ground. Very important to be in nature right now because it's very soothing for the soul. And I really predict that a lot of us are going to be volunteering uh, to help others to serve uh, to the best of our ability because that is also an aspect of the aristocratic energy of Oshun is that we must serve. We must serve others. We must volunteer and we must serve. It uh, kind of goes back to that song, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, right? So we give ourselves permission to let our light so shine. Uh, but be careful about that moon card. Olukun, yes. And Oludamari and all of the good deities. So, you know, it's interesting when you look at the African tradition of the Yoruba that goes back, you know, pre-agriculture, well, probably, well, not necessarily pre-agriculture. I think we can trace back the following of Oshun, the sweet water energy, I think at least 8,000 years. Uh, so it predates all existing religions. We see some aspects of this in the Bon tradition, uh, modern day Buddhism uh, talks about these forces that exist in the universe, uh, the goddesses or the Buddhist goddesses that uphold life. Very similar imagery used in Buddhist tradition uh, to the imagery we see in the African tradition. A lot of nice parallels. All right, well, I hope everybody enjoyed your collective reading. We're now 52 minutes in. Would everybody like to do some blitzes? I've got a ton of questions. Sound good? I need to remember to make my bed before I go live. <laughs> okay, let's see here. How's everybody doing? Blitz, blitz, blitz away. Ooh, I got the order. That's a good sign, isn't it? Okay, so let's see here. We've got a couple questions here. Are we ready to rumble? Awesome. Let's blitz, blitz, blitz away. We can be here doing blitzes for about an hour. Let's go. Carol H. is the first to ask a blitz question. Hi, Carol. She uh, wants to know who is paying for these Trump rally, rallies, the Trump rallies. Good question. There are a lot of expenses involved, including insurance, trafficking, porta potties, uh, etc. So thank you uh, to... Carol H. Who pays for the Trump rallies? That is a really good question. Let's do this. 
Who's paying for the Trump rallies? We'll do some blitzes. So what are you all having for your uh, barbecues? I'm going to lunch with Renee. She's made reservations for a very nice restaurant. Then we're going to do a little bit of walking. Just a blitz, just four cards. Ooh, grilled salmon. I'm, we're going to be having lunch at Constance Pleasant's house because she's making my favorite dish. I'm an Oregon, Washington girl. Got to have my salmon. They're under investigation for how the money is being used for the rallies as well. That basically, yeah. Evidently, it's from donors. It's from various different private charities, people donating to help uh, Trump fight against the liberals, etc. You can see here there appears to be some masters coming in. This could also indicate an investigation or people are flipping through. Even as rallies appear to be under investigation, and you can see the result is not good. Stress, stress, stress for the people in the uh, Trump community walking away, and then they put themselves in a pickle. I think we're going to see an end of the Trump rallies simply because the feds appear to be also going after his rallies. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? I mean, they're going after everything. Everything he touches is fraudulent as far as the feds are concerned. So the clarification, yeah, look at that. He has to walk away. He can't continue because he's under investigation. They, they want to know how he's using the money. That these are, This is personal donations. He's very stressed because now that they've opened up one subpoena, uh, all these subpoenas, uh, these grand jury investigations into Trump org, et cetera, et cetera. It's now opening up the opportunity for more investigations and he doesn't want to cooperate. You can see the four cups. He's stressing. He still doesn't want to cooperate with the federal investigation because you know, it's going to show that he's guilty and the clarification on him walking away. I'm telling you the Trump organization is no more. And I don't see him being able to go on many more rallies because he's under investigation for the rallies. And then the final outcome, he gets himself in a pickle. He gets himself in a pickle, the eight of swords. And quick, quick, quick. Eight of wands has an aspect to it of quick, quick, quick. It can also be fighting and stress. Eight of wands would indicate multiple. Look, this is not the end. There's multiple charges coming against the Trump organization. This feels to me like nothing is going to be left. All right. So this question coming from Mickey Stanton. This is definitely one that I wanted to do. Uh, hi, Mickey. Thank you for contributing this question. I appreciate that. Uh, what is going on with all the negativity about Kamala's staff? Well, yeah, people are complaining that it's very disorganized. They're blaming her main person that uh, oversees the staff. Highly dysfunctional. We can't have that. So let's see what's going on with VP Harris and the problems with her staff. All right, what is going on? All right, let's take a look. Kamala Harris. Well, she's definitely talked to Biden about it. Uh, Bi Biden wants to know what's going on. Uh, there seems to have been some, uh, he was, he had a meeting with uh, her about it, uh, that there's been some inf infighting or challenges. Uh, sadly, it's too, a lot of women in positions of power, and I see fighting between the women. 
You can see here the three of cups and then the confusion and then people have to leave. I think peop, there's two or three people that will not, look, they don't have to be fired. They can just agree to resign with a five of swords as the outcome, but it's, it's sheer chaos. And so the people that are responsible for that have to go. It's just not working. The fact that Biden is, what the hell's going on over in your offices? You don't want to have conversations like that with your boss. You have to take care of it. Let's do the clarification. Well, you know, here's the thing. Biden wants to send his people into her department because his people are organized. It's almost like Biden wants to take control over her hiring or bring his people in to stabilize things. You got this crash coming between her and Biden laying down the law. If, if I were in his shoes based on these cards, I would say to her, why don't you let me, my people come in, do some uh, forensics on the issue, straighten things out, get yourself organized. I'll send some of my people over and we, cause we got to stabilize the situation. It's not appropriate. You can see a two of cups here trying to, you know, the partnerships offering to heal. There's an, a, a man coming in. She's possibly going to hire a man. Some guy comes in possibly recommended from Biden to uh, clean the situation. It's unfortunate because some of the people that she may like personally uh, friends, etc. Unfortunately, they're just not suited uh, to this job. And I think Biden's going to lay his foot down. And I think he's going to bring his own people in to straighten things out. And I think he's going to suggest a man for this position. Sorry, but some, you know, it should be gender neutral. Whoever's the best person for the job should get the job, right? So that's what happens. And it looks like she brings a man in, uh, an assistant who's just really good at getting things organized. Well, thank you, John. That's very sweet of you. Okay. Wow. That was surprising. I didn't expect that. Okay. This question is coming from PB. Uh, she wants to know if Kavanaugh and Barrett uh, will get the outs. Kavanaugh and Barrett uh, forced out. The, they went definitely on the right. Oh, did I type that? I don't see my own handwriting. Did I? No, maybe I didn't. Hi, Mark. Good to see you. Okay, let's see here. So we're doing Kavanaugh and Barrett. Future. Um, I don't, I didn't feel that. I didn't feel like there was enough evidence to remove. It's really hard to remove a Supreme Court judge, but um A lot of people have mixed feelings about these voter laws. Some parts hurt the, the, the Democrats, but some may actually help the Democrats. For example, one of the bills that got passed was that you cannot have somebody appointed to go and collect the, uh, you know, when you're voting, you can't just have somebody in the neighborhood say, oh, I'll take it down. Because what happened, I believe, in North Carolina and possibly in Kentucky was that people were showing up at people's homes and saying, oh, yeah, I can take your ballot and I can deposit it for you. And the ballots were getting thrown into the trash. So one of the things that they addressed with the Arizona law is that you can't just randomly. It has to be somebody that's a member of your family. Some Democrats feel that that may actually shoot the Republicans in the foot because they're the ones that have been caught uh, stealing people's votes and throwing them in the trash. So it's mixed, right? It's a mixed bag. It, uh, part of it works against us and part of it may work for us. Let's, uh, 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 you know, it's something to definitely uh, think about. Let's look at Kavanaugh first, the future of Kavanaugh.
The Future of Kavanaugh. All right. Um, you know, one of the things I get the impression of with Kavanaugh is this respect for Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And I have the same respect. Uh, I see the same respect with Amy Coney Barrett, that they knew her. She was not an emotional person. She was very calm. She would simply discuss the law based on the data. She was not overly emotional. You have with Kavanaugh this type of feeling that now he really just wants to be the scholar. He's always focusing on the law, focusing on scholarship. There's an aspect here of a legacy, like pressure that he's part of a legacy. It could be the federal society, but there's this energy of I'm part of a legacy. So in a sense, you could say his vote doesn't belong to him. There is a possibility he may choose to leave early because of ongoing investigations. You can see here a hanged man, he hangs it up and then the people celebrate. So rather than being forced out, we could see ongoing investigations or problems with Kavanaugh that cause him to potentially leave early. You know, with that hanged man and the celebration coming up. Let's uh, clarify it for people. I didn't expect that because intellectually I was thinking he ain't going nowhere. But when you have that, if he's being pressured, if they, you know, if it's like the list they gave Putin, we got this, 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 and this on you on Kavanaugh. Do you really want us to make it public? Maybe it's time for an early retirement. It could be a situation like that. Better for everybody all around. His, uh, he's under some type of serious federal investigation. That can be the police or police action. There does appear to be something happening with him. The over the legacy, I'm assuming this is the federal society. Uh, there's also an investigation potentially into the people that put him there or the people that are trying to get federal, uh, take over the federal judges. You can see a thief card or an attempt to flee a situation that has to do with family legacy. It can also be dirty little secrets. That's the dark side of the Ten of Pentacles regarding why he leaves or considers leaving the clarification on that archangel michael which is the truth bearer who has the sword of truth archangel michael we know that messengers malachim in hebrew is the same as angels so when we think about angels and messengers we think about the pages also they can be children but if you're looking specifically at this as a messenger or as an angel, we think about Archangel Michael because Archangel Michael carries a sword. He fights the devil and he wins. He's also associated with truth, like the sword of truth is carried by Archangel Michael. That's why I always associate Archangel Michael with the page of swords. Uh, it's not looking good for Kavanaugh, I'll be quite honest with you. The people celebrate. Why do the people celebrate? Why do the people celebrate? The world celebrates. I think he's going to have to leave because something is, he's being investigated for something. Uh, also, the society or the group that helped him get into onto the bench is also under investigation, possibly for bribes or some kind of theft or illegal activity with the seven of swords there would lead me to conclude that he, and that knight of swords, which could be a raid or police action. I think he's under investigation because he's associated with possibly criminal calls that and theft. If he stole the seat, that would definitely come up as a theft card. It's not looking good for Kavanaugh and it's looking, yeah, Laura, you're feeling bad for Kavanaugh. <laughs> you're laughing. You're laughing. Oh my goodness. So should I do it? Should I be a bad girl? Should I? Okay. Kavanaugh, you're going to have to leave. I'm going to do the sound effect. Going to give you a heads up.
I know. You don't belong on the bench. Because you really aren't equipped. Because you stole the seat. Because they bribed people. I know. Just wipe your tears. And I hope your wife who's divorcing you gets everything she's asking for. I know. I could be. I'm the Oracle of Whimsy. I'm not a saint. All right. So next question, is everybody laughing and having a good time because I'm here for the next half hour. Okay, next question is coming from, hello, what is that, Mel Melster. Will the truth about everyone involved in planning and executing the insurrection be brought to light, including members of Congress, the Pentagon, various lawyers, and officials who delayed deployment of the National Guard for hours? So Melster, 80, uh, 48, that's a really good question. So we're going to see about the consequences of the people that were involved with January 6th insurrection. This is so much fun to hang out with you guys and just play, 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 laugh, and have a good time. Oh, I didn't do Barrett yet. I apologize. I have to do Amy Coney Barrett first. Oh, let me undo this. Oh, uh, let me remove that. I apologize. See, Amy Coney Barrett, I've gotten into her energy. And even though I don't agree with her on a lot of stuff, she's pretty good about not letting herself get manipulated. I like her more than Kavanaugh, to be honest with you. Okay. Let's do it. Let's find out. All right. What's happening with the future of Amy Coney Barrett? I keep thinking about her super spreader event on the at the Rose Gardens. Okay. You know, I really feel like she keeps to herself. She's not social. She's not hanging out and doing lunch with the other justices. There's a four of pentacles, which is a retractive energy. It's also seriously looking at stuff. It's a frugal energy. This is a cautious person, a frugal person. Uh, she doesn't, she uh, handles her life very cautiously, very methodically, uh, holds the coin close. This I would say is a very frugal, cautious person, grounded, who does not see herself as making emotional rash decisions. Not with those types of cards. Uh, queen of Wands, she, you know, she's on the bench. The leader sees herself as the Queen of Wands. Uh, the Hierophant, she holds, right, the Constitution. A new beginning for her. Should have done four cards. I turned this into a 12 card instead. Uh Concern about new beginnings. Oh, things are uh, changing in her marriage. You know, her marriage took a hit after this. Something happened with her marriage that uh, it actually created uh, marital problems. I feel her and her husband have moved apart since this whole thing happened. Uh, she's very stressed out. Uh, I feel tension in her marriage, just like Kavanaugh. Hopes and fears. I think she wants to be a good judge. And then her final outcome is the Six of Cups. She'll go back to, I think she's going to be like Scalia. She's going to vote like Sc Scalia. The old, going back to what she loves, going back to her traditions. Her traditions are Scalia, working across the aisle from a conservative interpretation with a Six of Cups as the outcome. The clarification for her, I don't see her leaving, but I see that she's going to have a real hard time challenged interpreting the constitution with the new problems that are coming ahead for the nation, because you can see here her rigid interpretation of the law is going to come with problems, but I don't see her leaving. Thanks, Miss Brazil. That's awfully sweet. 
All right, now we can do the January 6th insurrection and if everyone's gonna be caught. All right, what is gonna happen with the January 6th investigation? So much fun. Yeah, you know, she wants to be like Scalia, which means being able to have a sane conversation with Kagan about date, you know. I can see her just unemotionally. Kagan's like that. Kagan's very by the books. She's an advisor to the Supreme Court in Israel, as well as being a Supreme Court member here. She just looks at data. Uh, sometimes she rules with the conservatives most of the time with the liberals, but with Kagan, it's just, well, what's the data? Um, I think that she and Amy Coney Barrett have that in common. It's interesting. Okay, January 6th. I could play the fires of hell again, but that would, about January 6th. People going to jail, we could, no? Don't wanna hear the people burning in the fires of hell? No, not, not today? Okay. Just ask. January 6th. Will there be justice? We'll do a blitz. Four cards, four cards. What's gonna happen with January 6th? I think it's completely dismantled. It goes back to this idea that Homeland Security now recognizes them as domestic terrorists, which means that if somebody's a terrorist, you can just go pick them up, off you go to Gitmo, and someday we'll try you or we won't. I, uh, it's a whole other uh, ball of wax when you're calling something terrorism. Right now, where they're at, Five of Swords, they're walking away from a battle that they cannot win. In terms of the people that were involved in the insurrection, complete confusion. They're in a state of seven of cups, total chaos. They, they don't know who they are. They don't know what they are. They don't know why they did this. They can't figure out uh, why this happened, how this happened who they are. There's an ace of wands moving in, which is entrepreneurship or a new beginning. And a fool takes a leap of faith with this new beginning. And it's a new grounded energy from the earth wood. You know, it's grounded energy. It's also associated with fire. Uh, the wood is, uh, it's interesting in Chinese medicine, we think of wood as liver and gallbladder green, it can, which is uh, associated with anger when you have congested liver. And it's so interesting that uh, the wood is associated with Aries in the card chart or the fire signs, but because wood can burn. Let's do the clarification on this. Yeah, I think they're all caught and I think they're all going to jail. And I think that a lot of people that got sucked into it are going to learn the Constitution. This is about educating Americans and really doing everything we can under Biden to educate people. This is an education campaign. You can see here over the people that walked away. A lot of the people that were involved are not involved anymore. We have a lot of people cooperating. A lot of people who have gone before the judge. They say they're embarrassed by what they've done. Um, and they're getting off. And they're going for the big guns. Here, a new beginning. They, you can see the level of confusion these people had. None of this was real. You, it was like a cult. This is total in the clouds, but you have this new beginning, this wood energy, like starting a new road. And same thing here, new ventures, Ace of Wands, and then Four of Pentacles, uh, uh, frugally looking or examining at a situation, Fool takes a leap of faith, and then we have the ethos of the nation, the Constitution wins. So I think that 
it will be diffused. The people that were rioting and angry, I think that's going to be diffused by about 80% in a very short amount of time. And these people will be shown uh, uh, grace and compassion, some of them, the people that were just chanting and whatever. They're going to have to sit there and realize that they were in a cult and that all the people that led the cult are going to prison. It's, you know, they took advantage of uneducated, vulnerable people. I'm not talking about the higher-ups that knew what they were doing, like Giuliani, who's facing all kinds of uh, consequences. I'm talking about the regular uh, poor, uneducated person who went and marched and yelled and found themselves in a situation where they got played, basically. So, yeah, I would say with the outcome being the hierophant, which, I den which to me is the ethos of the nation or the Constitution, I, I think that, yes, we will see justice. Okay, so I had a question from Mark Rhodes that I thought I would do to just kind of have a little fun here. Uh, we're uh, close to 1,200 strong, so be sure and share, like, subscribe. Click the bell notification if you like hanging out with me. I'd uh, love to have uh, you as a subscriber to support the channel. But Mark Rhodes is asking a very interesting question, and I think we have to take a look. And that has to do with Britney Spears. I don't know if I'm spelling her name right. Um, as people know uh, who've been uh, keeping up with the Britney Spears story, a lot of people are saying that, you know, this is, again, one, one of those rare situations where I actually, again, agree with Meghan McCain. Meghan McCain was, much to my surprise, making sense. Uh, she often doesn't. But this time she did make sense when she said this is basically uh, human trafficking. This is like the poster child of human trafficking. She doesn't have control of her uterus. Uh, they've, put a, they've put a device to keep, they're forcing her to work. They're taking the money. Uh, she must work, and uh, she they control who she dates, what she eats, the work she does, and her whether or not she can get inseminated. So she her body is not her own. Now I don't know about all of you, but if somebody was taking over my vagina, taking over my job, taking over my control over my own money. Uh, since I was born, I'd be pretty messed up and I would probably have complex post-traumatic stress disorder and I would probably get extremely angry and I would want to fight back. Unfortunately, if she fights back and says, I don't want to work, I'm exhausted. The misogynistic fascists who are in charge, you know, who have used psychiatry for centuries to oppress women, you know, the the unholy history of psychiatry's treatment of women. If a woman doesn't do what you want, you can simply, you know, hysterectomies, right? Control her uterus. And that's exactly what we're seeing. We're seeing the 21st century version of human trafficking, controlling her uterus, controlling her work, getting up in there, right? Getting up in there and controlling her. If she fights back, if if Kate isn't tamed, if she isn't a good little girly girly and submit, then they're going to tell her that she's not cooperative. They'll put her on lithium and drugs, which is what they do to prostitutes and other people. Uh, people forced into prostitution through human trafficking. They're given drugs to make them complacent, so they will go out and work and submit. So she is submitting. Now she has done the cardinal sin that no survivor of this type of exploitation must ever do. She has outed them. She has pointed the finger and said, you have a device in my uterus and you've put drugs affecting my brain and you're forcing me into labor. And do I have any human rights at all? And if I yell and fight and scream about it, it's because I am a nasty lady, right? Nasty women must be controlled. That's basically the Britney Spears situation. So let's take a look. The sexist uh, need to control women, which unfortunately has been the hallmark of psychiatry 
for a very long time, unfortunately. All right. So let's take a look. Yeah, any father that wants to be that deep up in his daughter's uterus is some, you know, that that is a form of sexual abuse. That is a form of incest, even if it's not, uh, even if it's not the classic form. The point is, is that he feels he has the right to have control of, over her sexuality, over her sexual organs, labor, etc. Even though she's forty, because she's the She's the golden goose. Keep laying those eggs. You got to go out and shake your tuchas and bring us the money, right? To give her more drugs so that she's happy. We can simulate happiness in the slave by giving them the proper drugs, right? You're happy. You're happy. Give her more lithium. Go out and peddle your stuff and bring us the money, right? Uh, she's going to be victorious, but there's a lot of psychological damage for what's been done to her. And this is, you can see the five of cups. She lost a lot. Uh, but you can see the victory card, uh, six months. This is going to blow up in their faces. The karmic wheel. It goes back to the energy of the empowered self-respect, respect for the feminine, right? Oshun, she, you know, she that spirit that uh, governs femininity on this planet, the, the uh, sexuality, etc., taming, subduing the earth, raping the earth, forcing the earth to do things the earth doesn't want to do. It's all part of the same idea of control, tame, take, possess possess the sex, possess the power, possess the uterus, control, control, possess. And if you fight back, it's because you're a sick girl who needs to get some help. Healthy women are compliant, obedient, and submissive to everything the man tells them to do. And if you do that, you're a good woman. If you don't do that, you're insane and we will control you. That's the message. The California AG is looking into this and it's these reports are very disturbing and it's forcing the attorney general of California to seriously look at it. That's the best way to interpret it. You have the king of cups coming in, some kind of moderator or somebody to possibly in a position of power there. Uh, this has been going on. My, my guys are saying since 2015, this kind of expose. So this that means that for six years now, she's been trying to get people to, to see this, and then the sun is going to be an exposure. I think that what's going to happen is that the attorney general and the feds are going to get involved, and I think that this shows a crack in the system that's really going to... Look, there's a wheel of fortune there and a six of wands moving in. Oh, thank you, Joanne. Yeah, look at that. This is an investigation. They could be even taking real estate and other things. From what it looks like, they actually possessed uh, Britney Spears' homes. They took her homes and they took it from her. They took her property. Oh, no, you're too sick to have that mansion, so we're moving in and taking it. For oh, you're, you're angry? You're angry because we put a device in your uterus and are forcing, dance, little girl, dance, dance, dance. Oh, you're tired? We'll just give you amphetamines. Oh, the amphetamines are making you paranoid? That's okay. We'll give you benzos. Oh, you're a drug addict? Well, if you're a drug addict, then you certainly can't be in control of your, your finances. We must control you because you're a drug addict. You see how this works? Take your benzos. Take your lithium. Do what we say when we tell you to do it. Dance, dance, dance. Oh, you're tired? We'll give you some more amphetamines. You're getting fat. You know what you do to stay thin? We'll give you some more amphetamines. Oh, it's making you paranoid? We'll give you, well, here, take some drugs. It's, it's that kind of an energy. But you've got actual legal investigation, possibly by the feds, I'm telling you, into how this happened. And it's an eye-opener for the state of California. I would not want to be the people that created this, including the judge. You don't want a three of pentacles from the feds. Absolutely not. 
How, who okayed this? How was it allowed to get to this point? Who's responsible? This is a fed, federal investigation. I'm glad. See, sometimes even Megan McCain makes sense. She said, get the FBI in there to physically escort her from the home, put her under FBI protection. And she's right because this appears, look at this. Oh, no, 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 no. You do not want Oshun showing up. This is an energy that you do not, uh -uh. You do not want that angry, strong, right? I seek justice, absolute. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna stop until I get justice. I seek justice, absolute. Where are you going? Let me see that document. Where are you going? I seek justice, abs. I'm not leaving until you give me justice, absolute. Oh, get over it. Oh, that's not gonna happen. I'm Oshun. Oshun doesn't get over it. Pay up. Give me the money. Pay me back. Show me the data. I'm not gonna leave. Show me the data. Show me the evidence. Show me what you did. Justice absolute. Justice. That's it. Justice absolute. I seek justice absolute. You're not going to get rid of me until I get justice out. You have obsessive compulsive uh, disorder. Yes, I do when it comes to justice absolute. So it's that uh, they can't win at this point. If you want to go against Britney Spears, you will go up in a fiery crash with this type of energy coming in. It's not just the feds are going after them. It's that an army of people who seek justice absolute and they're not going to get over it until they get justice absolute. You want me to be, you want me to move on? Give me what I want. It's uh, wish granted. She's free. Her outcome. She wins. Well, we live in a sick world, right? And unfortunately, you can be... You know, I personally would suffer from severe mental disorder if I was in her shoes and I had people control forcing things up inside me and saying, you ain't going to have no baby. You're going to dance and bring us the money. I would probably be suicidal. And I think most normal, healthy people would. Uh, if anything is going to cause mental illness, it's that, you know, it goes back to Freudian psychology where Freud said that if a woman comes in and says she was raped, it's because it's just a fantasy and she's really secretly wants to be raped etc so forced uh f forced hysterectomies a great book to check out if you haven't done so yet if you'd like to find more out about psychiatry's war on women particularly powerful women would be um mad in america great book and it's a book that I relied on heavily when I did my dissertation uh, on eugenics, uh, the belief that some people are more superior than others based on things like, you know, race, et cetera. All of that is also part of psychiatry, the, the bloody history of psychiatry used to justify slavery, anti-Semitism and oppressing women. And unfortunately it's still part of psychiatry. So, Thank God now we have feminist psychiatry starting to emerge. Uh, but it's still, you can see these horrors are still happening because the foundation is just so unbelievably sexist. Yes, Sharon. And we used to be able to lock up wealthy aristocratic women who said, you can't do that with my money. You can't take your mistress, spend all my money on your mistress. Oh, all, off to bed, lamb. She's a very sick girl. She needs to get some help for herself. She's not quite right in her mind. She thinks I'm having affairs. She thinks, oh, she's so crazy. If you could just be tame, Kate, submit. You know, it's that kind of, you, you know, yeah. So that's kind of, but the good news is, is that within the next six months, she wins and she triumphs and there's a lot of soul searching at the end of that. The time of oppressing female power has come to an end. It's not good for men or women. It's not good for men either, by the way. Um, anytime anybody's oppressed, it's not good for humanity, right? Right. 
Okay, so we're going to go ahead and close up. We've been here for about an hour and a half. I think we're done. Did everybody have a great time? Would anyone like to uh, hear? Uh, let's see. What would you like to hear? Would you like to hear Trump crying about being prosecuted? Would you like to hear Trump cry? Would you like to hear Mike Pompeo cry? Would you like to hear them burning in an imaginary hell? Whatever you guys want to do. You want to hear the Trump cry one more? Okay. I'm feeling like you guys want to hear Trump cry and Ivanka cry one more time. Okay, here it is. One more time before we the Trump crying. I know. You're going to lose Durango. Marlago too. Marlago. I know. Yeah, I'd probably New Jersey. Okay. And one more time, Ivanka being told that she can't spend $200,000 on her hair anymore. Instead, that money is going to be going to our brave men and women with complex PTSD that need the money more than she does. Here you go, Ivanka. No more $200,000 for your hair. I know. I know. It's going to go to our veterans who are missing legs and arms and... I know it's going to go to our animals that need shelter, domestic, I know domestic uh, violence survivors. It's just, Oh my God. And for those people who really are struggling and are have feel that you have no power whatsoever for the Mike Pompeo's, the Giuliani's and all the other people that have made hell for you in the last uh, five years, they're going to be burning in an imaginary pit of hell. There you have it. The fire's burning. Hey, you snooze, you lose. All right. What can I tell you? Blitz. We already did the blitzes. I've been here for an hour and a half. You don't want to hear uh, crying. Okay. Doesn't want to hear crying. So instead, we will give you the cheer of victory that comes from being on the right side of history. So let's give ourselves applause. An applause to all the readers and all the fans who are. That was Dante's Inferno. Very good. And now we're going to be doing the applause because we won the war. And remember what Mueller said. Tick, tock, tick, tock, right? Sooner or later you're gonna be mine. Tick, tock, sooner or later it's gonna be fine. Tick, tock, because Robert Mueller always gets his man sooner or later. There you go. Thanks for watching and thank you for letting me play with my toys. If you're still trying to get in for a reading, I would love to work with you. You can go to tarotwithwhimsy.com. Love and light to everyone. Thank you so much for the support. Thank you so much for the donations. Be sure and check out the other readers. Linda G was in the house today. Also be sure and check out Sheila Celtic Tarot, uh, Lynn Tarot, uh, all the great readers, uh, Revealing Light, Alina Rodriguez, uh, Nasty Women. There are so many amazing readers out there um, that I've had the opportunity to work with. And I, I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention them uh, before closing today. Have a great fourth. Have a safe fourth. And I'll see you next time. Bye, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.